Hello guys, it's Mashtag here. Today I want to show you the multicore firmware mod for the SF2000. Beside the known systems for this device, multicore not just extends the number of emulators, it also improves them in terms of performance and fixes. This specific version I show you today also comes with some extra tweaks and ported games for your device that we're gonna take a look on later in this video. First, we go through the required steps to download and install this mod and take a look at the performance improvements, especially for the critical systems like Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advance. And I get an interesting info for you at the end of the video that you should not miss. Enjoy! Let's take a brief look on what we get with this mod and what Multicore provided with the latest updates. Version 0.09 already added a big bunch of further emulators for this device, such as C64, Pico 8, Vectrex and Metal Intellivision. As well as some cores for ported games like EC Wolf for Wolfenstein 3D, Cannonball for the Outrun arcade game and Nintendo Pokemon Mini. The 0.10 update then came with a lot of fixes and optimizations for existing cores, while it also sorted out some of them that didn't perform very well or even crashed with the latest changes. So all in all a very decent update for the device that is definitely worth installing to it. Now to install Multicore you would have to get the latest version from their official GitHub page and overwrite the existing files in the resource folder. But I show you a much easier way to do it that also comes with quite more improvements and extras and the best, it's a pre-configured bundle that we can just copy over to a clean micro SD card and we're ready to go. Just follow the link in the video description to open up the Purple Neo Multicore 0.10 build on arcade.org. Click on the link with the label zip in the downloads option here to download the arcade to your PC. This is a 10 GB bundle, so it may take some time to download. Since this build is based on Datafrog's latest firmware 1.7.1, it already includes a lot of improved emulator cores and fixes. To install this firmware, we need a microSD card with at least 16 GB of capacity and ensure the SD card is formatted in FAT32. So let's already insert the SD card to the PC. After the download is complete, we can enter the download folder and extract the content of the archive directly to the microSD card. Now that all files are copied over, we can close the window and release the SD card safely from the system. Now we can eject the card from the reader and put it into the SF2000. Ensure not to cut your fingernails too short or you'll have to use a tool like I needed here to snap it into place. Let's power on the device and measure the boot up time. As you can see this multicore version comes with a nicely Super Nintendo stylish boot up logo. Roughly after 7 seconds the SF2000 has started up and is ready to play. The menu hasn't changed much except of the skin. Now everything is in this purple neo look as the name of this bundle already suggested. Compared to the original image, this bundle comes with a few more games per system plus the ported games that we're gonna take a look on later. But now let's jump right into some gameplay. Let's start with an arcade game and play some Metal Slug. The button layout fits perfect for this game and what I particularly like here is the analog stick right next to the D-pad. This makes it pretty easy to switch in between the D-pad while running around and usage of the joystick to shoot enemies. Atari Lynx emulation just runs as smooth as the arcade games. Classics like Pac-Man run absolutely fine and even though the Lynx never had a joystick, it feels much easier to control through games like Desert Strike on the SF2000. So let's jump over to more demanding systems and take a look on Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. And here 
I feel a huge improvement in emulation speed. Sonic controlled through the levels like a hot knife through butter. Smooth graphics and no sound stutters. The gameplay experience with Sega Genesis games is just amazing now. Next, I tried Game Boy Advance games with the new core. As well as Sega Genesis, the Game Boy Advance games run perfectly at full speed. Even graphically demanding titles like Rayman Advance were no problem to play with this device now. Now finally, let's take a look at the SNES games. Still, the easy and non-demanding titles are no problem for the SF2000. Titles like Aladdin or Super Mario World are pretty much playable in every game scenario and really feel fun to play. Still, the end boss for this device is not beaten yet. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island lacks of performance. You can still feel the frame drops and so the overall gaming experience for this title still isn't good. But I found a way to tweak the emulator settings, so maybe there's a way to improve the situation in future here a little more. Now that we took a look on the existing emulators, let's see how the new emulators perform on this device. And since Multicore already comes with a few Pico 8 games pre-installed, we're gonna take a look at this system now. The first thing you might mention here is that the sound is turned off by default for Pico 8. The reason for this is a huge performance issue with the sound turned on as you can see here in comparison. The frame rates even drop down under 20 frames per second as soon as sound gets played back and so makes the game run extremely slow for these moments. Still, if you keep it turned off, the games run amazingly well and the missing sound actually didn't bother me too much for the titles I played. If you like to play around with the sound setting yourself, you can insert the SD card to your PC and open the Cores folder. Inside that, open the folder called config and find the fake "-08.opt file. This is the emulator's configuration file. Open it up and change the fake 08 underscore audio entry from disabled to enabled. After that, save the file and release the SD card safely. If you like to turn off the audio again, repeat the steps and change the fake 08 underscore audio entry back to disabled. Next, I took a look at the C64 emulation. In order to play on the system, we have to add some games first. To add on ROMs, we have to follow an easy pattern to create game shortcuts in the ROMs folder. So insert the SD card and navigate to the ROMs folder. Here, we want to create a system folder for the associated ROM files and give it a speaking name like C64, what I already did. Then, copy your C64 ROMs into that folder, like shown here with the game Turrican The Final Fight. After that, switch back to the ROMs folder and copy paste one of the existing files here. This is a runner file for the actual ROM game. Its name follows the pattern subfolder name, semicolon, game file name dot gba so for our example here copy the name of the game file with the file extension and rename the copy we just created to c64 semicolon terrican minus the final fight dot crt dot gba Let's quickly do it for another game called Bubble Bobble. Copy it over to the C64 subdirectory in the ROMs folder. Create a copy of an existing game shortcut. Copy the name of the game file including the file extension to the clipboard and switch back to the ROMs folder. Here we rename the copy we recently created to C64 semicolon bubblebobble.crt.gba Now we can close the file explorer and safely remove the SD card from the system. So let's actually take a look at the C64 emulation performance 
and as you can already recognize from the sound stuttering, the system doesn't perform very well. Even though I'm glad that new emulators find their way to the SF2000, there is much room for improvement here. These first versions are promising, but still far from providing a playable version to this device. Even more demanding titles like IK Plus are not yet fun to play, because they are just too laggy. But maybe we'll see a version in future that can handle C64 emulation. From a technical point of view, I would expect C64 emulation to be possible with this device, since it already handles systems like Game Boy Advance or Sega Genesis just fine. Let's take a look at some ported games, starting with an arcade classic, Outrun Cannonball. Actually, another title that is really fun to play on the SF2000, since steering is so much more comfortable with the analog joystick. But Multicore also comes with a few first-person shooters, and how could it miss that one game that runs on everything from toaster to high-end PC, Doom. This game got ported so well to this device in terms of performance and handling. The button mapping fits perfectly and again, the joystick does a great job on controlling. Together with the shoulder buttons for straving, it is so easy to clean up the levels. Same goes with Doom 2. Both games are available as full versions and are really fun to play with the SF2000. Going back in time to another first-person shooter, we have Wolfenstein 3D on this device. As well as for the Doom games, the gameplay is so much easier since the device comes with that analog joystick. Running through the levels, shooting down your enemies, everything just goes super smooth. Finally, I also tested a few Pokemon minigames, but not much to say here, they just play great. And even though I never was into Pokemon Mini, it was really fun to play those little minigames as a waiting time killer. It would really be great if a few more ports find their way to this device in future. If you're interested in a more detailed overview of the emulators and performance, take a look at this Excel sheet here. It lists up all cores with a ranking of their performance, and it also includes the cores that are used to run ported games. The green section is where you actually want to take a look on. These are the emulators that run stable on the device and where almost all game titles are playable. Systems of the yellow section are mainly slow or have major problems running games in the way they should. For example, crept button mapping, no sound, crashes, etc. Further down, it gets even worse, with cores that don't even run or need extra effort to even be enabled for the device. On the second page of the sheet, you find links to the GitHub pages of all available emulators so far. So, depending on your nerd level, you may find some interesting information here. We come to the end of this video and maybe some of you guys already wondered why I didn't show the NES performance yet. And the reason for this is because I wanted to show you the best improvement of Multicore at the end of this video. Since Multicore version 0.09, it is possible to drastically improve, if not completely solve, the screen tearing problem. Yes, you've heard right, there is a fix for the screen tearing problem on the SF2000. It's a simple and short fix as you can see on the gameplay example in the background. The screen tearing fix will be the topic of my next video here coming soon, so stay tuned for this video. And remember, dinosaurs didn't subscribe to my channel and they all died out. So don't make the same mistake and subscribe for free today. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye!